so I'm Gillian from Creative Dundee and an organisation I've been running for the last 10 years. Um, only the last five years has it been an actual thing. Uh, the five years before I was doing it as a hobby. So I was running it on top of my day job and I essentially just wanted to showcase what was happening in our city. Now, uh, as I say, 10 years on, we've just actually joined uh, Creative Scotland's regularly funded organisation portfolio, which is really exciting. And that essentially means um, a bit more funding than we were previously getting, but also for an extended period of time, three years rather than one year. So it's a delight to be here. We're really data-driven in our approach because um, we have to be. We have to be relevant, so we have to continually, to continually pivot and shift what we do in relation to our, our community's needs. This is a Petra Kutcher night we run. Um, we get 450 people coming along from a huge cross-sector kind of mix of backgrounds from the health and social care sectors through to, well, just anything, really. Um, and people are just genuinely interested in what's happening in the city. Um, the reason I put that, that there is that we again use things like Facebook Live to live stream our events. So for each event that we have, we have about 5,000 people that watch it online. And again, we can, we can use the kind of analytical data to see exactly which speakers are hitting um, the high notes for people. And, and that's really valuable, but we don't get too obsessed with that kind of back-end uh, metrics because we could just um, be really dull. So that's not working. I'll just try again. Um, so this is what we do. We amplify, connect, cultivate, and collaborate. Couldn't think of a, a fourth C, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, but genuinely, there was the, these these really work for us um, in terms of our kind of mission and values. Um, this is what our community said about us. Um, not such a big fan of word clouds, but overused, but one that goes into your logo is quite nice. So uh, these were, we asked our community the three words that uh, described us, and, and this is a kind of generation of that, generated version of that. Um, I mentioned we have an uh, active online platform. So we prioritise content that is maybe being done by interesting artists, collectives, organisations that maybe don't have the resource or the know-how to kind of effectively shout about themselves. Um, but yeah, we, we run uh, monthly events called Make Share, which is all about speaking about the process uh, behind your work um, as much as sort of showing off what you do. So this was the project that I briefly mentioned that really set everything in motion. So in 2013, Dundee was bidding to be a UK city of culture. And that really kicked off. Yes, we were having the V&A, and that will come 15th of September this year. But um, in terms of kind of garnering the, the city to come together and get behind something, um, this really did it for us. So We Dundee was, is a, an, a crowdsource platform that, as I say, allowed people to share what they loved about the city and what they would love to see happen in the future of the city. And each of these little avatars you could click on and, and kind of read what people were saying. Um, and we, we led the community engagement element of that. So we did all the kind of social media trying to get people behind it. We had over 4,000 people respond to that. And we had people from all different backgrounds kind of feeding in their ideas. We had posters around the city that, that asked people to kind of comment on that. And, and I, I suppose when, when you're thinking about data, collecting data, that is a huge part of it is, is almost, I don't like to think about it as marketing, but it is essentially that. How are you going to get people to kind of contribute their views? Um, so we worked with a local uh, student designer, Karen Lytle, who did these brilliant kind of pop-up stands in uh, shopping centres, in community centres across the city to make sure we didn't leave anybody behind. Um, and also we linked up with all the public libraries across the city to enable people to come forward with their ideas and then that would come back to us uh, centrally, which was great. Um, so these were some of the, the, the sort of ideas and things that were shared. Um, it was really mixed. And what we found was people were tuning into it almost like a, another TV channel. So um, we could see, again, from the kind of Google Analytics data that people were absolutely coming back time and time again to kind of check what other, people's are, what other people were saying about it. Um, 
And we were able, again, to do kind of quite interesting uh, visual representations that we were sharing on Facebook, and then that increased the kind of interest. The local media, if you do something like this, it's brilliant, because the local media don't need to speak to anybody because it's all in the public domain. So they were literally just taking stuff from the website. They created a new kind of feature for their, their newspaper, and it was great. It really kind of brought people together. Um, we, when we didn't get that UK City of Culture bid, um, we kind of reformed and revised and, and um, subsequently became a UNESCO City of Design, which is a kind of lifelong title, but that's a, a story for another uh, day, I think. But what we have done um, more recently is turned We Dundee, because the kind of public sentiment for it was so strong and it almost become its own, became its own personality, we've turned it into a kind of um, chatbot, which is in sort of beta stage at the moment and, and it's in harvesting stage. So the idea behind We Dundee was that we're really interested as a city in the kind of insider's guide to the city, not in the peripheral, you should go and see the Dundee, uh, you should go and see the, the discovery in Dundee and the v &A. That's all great, but we, as a small city that, that can make things happen relatively quickly, we are really interested in, in how do you get people to uh, uncover the real kind of city, the, the undiscovered undisco story. So we Dundee came from that and um, essentially you log on and you can say hi back to it and then it asks if you want to upload a photo of the city and then it asks you questions that other people have left behind. So again, it's it's kind of harvesting um, data and and it's got a bit of a personality. Um, so it speaks back very friendly to you. So it, it shows images of the city and then is, is doing that. The idea next stage, the, for the next stage, is to then turn this into a chatbot that's capable of interacting with visitors that come to the city. Um, and that's a wee while off, but we're getting there. So Fleet Collective are the design agency who've led the, the design element of it. And again, Creative Dundee is leading the community engagement aspect. Um, so yeah, really fascinated to speak to anybody about chatbots, actually. Um, one of the other projects that we've done is crowdsourced a city guide. So this is the third iteration of the city guide that we've done. And again, it's that idea that, that people know the city best. Um, people that live there love it know it best. And so we just use Google Forms to simply crowdsource people's uh, thoughts around where they should go to eat, drink, be merry, uh, cultural venues, green spaces. And we've turned it into a little guide that um, has now been handed out to both universities, Dundee and Aberty, in terms of all their freshers. So something like 9,000 students have had this guide. NHS Scotland have been using it, or NHS Tayside have been using it to recruit um, at their recruitment fairs in Glasgow and other places. And we're just about to revamp it for 2018. And obviously with the new V&A coming, I guess that's got to be in there. It is a wee bit in there, but, um, but the, there's a real drive at the moment to, to kind of get ready for, for September. Um, another project we did was Small Society Lab, uh, and that was a partnership between Dundee and, and Mexico City. So Creative Dundee led it in partnership with Dundee Contemporary Arts and the University of Dundee. And that was about how do you link up a megapolis and a miniopolis, totally made up word, but um, <laughs> we've got a population of about 147,000. They've got a population of about 22 million. So how can those two cities possibly connect? And well, we found a way through Small Society Lab. So Small Society Lab is a, is, a, is a lab weekend that Creative Dundee runs. We'll be running it again next year. And it's looking at the small city of the future. So th I thought this was relevant for what we're discussing today. And so we simply used live stream technology to hook up the, the two cities. They were running a lab simultaneously in Mexico and we were uh, hosting it in Dundee. Now, what we did in advance was shared assets, shared photos, videos, uh, songs of our cities, and just put it on a big kind of Dropbox folder. And um, this is one of the, the things that I think is kind of funny if you've got data out of context. So you may know that Dundee's got lots of penguins. Um, there's lots of statues of penguins because of the Discovery Link and, and Scott of Antarctic. So they took that quite literally to me to think that we had penguins as our kind of city animal. 
And so they developed all these penguin-based video games, kind of little playable interventions. And it was just lovely. And obviously, up on the big screen, there was about 150 people uh, sitting in this audience, and they were pitching their idea at the time. And we were all just like grinning because we, we, didn't, we didn't feel like we could say, sorry, we don't actually have penguins. So yeah, th there's something really interesting about how you share cultures um, of your, your cities, your, of your places. Um, and not let anything get confused. So another project we've done is Culture Connects. So that's very much about identifying where culture is happening in citizens' eyes without using the word culture, because that just puts everybody off. So um, we're asking things like, where would you spend your perfect day in the city? Um, how do you like to spend your time? That kind of thing. So, and then getting people to map um, on this. And this has been a big part of the cultural strategy of the city is is really getting to the nitty gritty of, of what culture means to to real citizens. And this is a project we um, did uh, with Creative Edinburgh actually. And um, this was, it's called a live audit research. So it's essentially trying to take a snapshot in time at our events and gatherings of what the creative sector's needs, uh, wants, desires are. I suppose, um, and and we used, and it was myself and Janine Matheson, who's now at Codebase Sterling, who you heard from earlier, that developed these tools, and they're just really engaging ways for people to share their, their thoughts. Um, and then we can turn that into useful data. Uh, we use surveys and things as well, but they really don't get as much uh, love as, as the kind of live audits do. And then from there, we've built all kinds of other things. Fabric Dundee was um, around how do we bring together the community from all different uh, creative disciplines and at all stages of their career to think about the direction of, of the city and, and what, what it needed, what the creative sector needs were. From there, we developed Dundee's creative industry strategy. So again, Creative Dundee, nobody actually asking us to do this, but Creative Dundee saying, we think we're best placed as an independent organization with strong ties to the creative sector and to the kind of education and the, the agencies who support that sector to lead the development of this. So again, we did it in a very kind of Creative Dundee um, data-driven way. Um, and we pulled together, as I say, a representative group of people from that sector and then the agencies locally and nationally who support it. And over a two-year period, we crafted something that, um, that all parties were, were pretty happy with, which is really great. And so we, uh, rather than just create a kind of dusty document, um, we created posters across the city to, to engage people. We invited comment. You can actually listen to the audio podcast version of the strategy rather than just download it as a, as a kind of PDF. And it invites comment, and we've got a kind of case study section to, to include uh, things there. But ultimately, for us, it's all about this. And I think this is what we're here to discuss today. How do we create big collaborations in a small city? Um, and that's, that's me. So yeah, look forward to the rest of the day.